if you was to ask him right now what college he want to go to, he's like, I got to think about it, but all I know I want to play. That's, that's his passion. One family living through pandemic hardships. All it is was situations that was beyond his control. Now fighting for their son to play football his senior year. I need Chasta to give me a real legitimate reason. A fourth city joining others in Boulder County in proposing bans on open carry. The proposed ordinances are common sense, they're limited in scope, and they're consistent with legal precedent. As President Biden makes his case for preventing gun crime. Without public trust, law enforcement can't do its job serving and protecting all the communities. Good evening and thank you for watching Denver 7 News on Local 3. I'm Jessica Porter and I'm Amy Wattis. Not allowed to play football. That's the dilemma a Denver Public School senior is in right now. His mom says her son missed out on a year of school because they didn't have a stable place to live during the COVID-19 pandemic. I sat down with the teen and his mom after she reached out to Denver 7 looking for help. They could say no, but I'm a mom. I will not give up without a fight. Atia Taylor wants her 18 year old son Tariq Childers to play football at Abraham Lincoln High School his senior year. She says her family fell upon hard times right before the COVID-19 pandemic hit. So they relocated to Denver from Missouri after Tariq completed his freshman year, bouncing around between relatives homes. All the schools were closed. I didn't have a real steady place to live, so I didn't have a school to really put them into. She tried enrolling Tariq into the online school Goal Academy, but says there wasn't space for him. They didn't have space for sophomores, so they said they put him on the waiting list. I contacted a couple of other schools, but they didn't have any openings at the time. Sharing this letter with Denver 7, showing that Tariq did not win a place in the lottery. Tariq is currently attending Excel Academy, which does not offer athletics, which is why he wants to play at Lincoln. His coach allows him to to attend practice, but the Colorado High School Activities Association says he's not allowed to play at any games, saying in part the student in question completed eight semesters, four years of athletic eligibility per the state's membership bylaws. He was seeking a ninth semester athletic eligibility, which was denied due to the fact that the student already exhausted the eight semesters of athletic eligibility, while the opportunity to gain academic credit existed during that time. He played freshman year, didn't go to school at all his sophomore year, and started last year, his junior year, playing with Lincoln. And then this is his senior year, so he only had three years. Chassa says a student athlete's eligibility clock begins when they enter high school as a freshman, regardless of what state it's in. Ever since I touched the football, I was like, man, this is my sport. Tariq says football is his passion and that the sport helped him get back on track academically and kept him off the streets, giving him the drive to want to go to college. I do feel like I'm getting treated unfairly a little bit because that COVID situation, that's not my fault. That, I couldn't do nothing about that. Atia says Tariq's teammates and coaches support him being on the team. We reached out to Denver Public Schools for a statement. They said they don't have one. Four people have been arrested for the murder of a beloved member of Denver's East Colfax community. Right now, Denver police say they are still searching for one other person who may have fired a gun. Police have charged New Ra Allah, Lou Ray, Pa Ray, and Swab Bay with first degree murder. All are in custody. A fifth suspect has not been identified. Police tell us they believe the suspects are gang members. Back on July 15th, Ma Kang was hit and killed by a stray bullet after she returned home from work at her family's restaurant. Today, a Denver police spokesperson shared a message on behalf of Kang's family. I hope that gang members look at these situations and make changes in their lives. Stop terrorizing people. I hope that families will look at this, state, at this situation and pay attention to their kids. I hope there are less bad people in this world so these tragedies do not happen, so families do not lose loved ones. Detectives say they wouldn't have been able to solve this case without surveillance video and most importantly help from the community. If you know anything, call police. There have been several community meetings following this shooting regarding police response time in the East Colfax neighborhood and overall safety. A man in Wheat Ridge was shot in the leg after two men burst into his home and then took off. Now this happened last night at a home just blocks from the Lakeside Amusement Park. 
Police haven't made any arrests and are still working to figure out why the two suspects fired one shot at the 43 year old inside his home. Wheat Ridge PD says they don't believe members of the community are being randomly targeted. A Colorado Springs woman who was shot while visiting family in Milwaukee says she's ready to forgive the man who took so much from her. Carrie Barnhill remains in the hospital recovering. Last week, a man shot Carrie, her sister, brother-in-law, and a family friend. Carrie's sister was killed. Carrie says she was shot several times in the feet and legs and credits her military experience for keeping her alive. Being a uh, military, I fell to the floor and just played dead. Even when the bullets were going in my feet, I did not move because uh, being retired from the Air Force, I knew that would be a sign that I was still alive. And so uh, when the police came, they wouldn't let me look at all, but I knew that my sister was not going to make it. The suspect has not yet been arrested and Milwaukee police are still looking into a motive for the shooting. The city of Boulder is voluntarily pausing enforcement of its bans on assault weapons and large capacity magazines. This comes after a federal judge granted a temporary restraining order against the county. Rocky Mountain Gun Owners has filed a lawsuit over the city's gun control measures passed in June. In a news release, the city said the temporary ban on enforcement was done to allow time for more legal coordination among neighboring jurisdictions. And tonight, another front range town is taking aim at open carry laws. Denver 7's Megan Lopez has details. Boulder, Superior and Louisville already passed local ordinances of their own when it comes to guns after the state legislature enacted a law last year. That law allowed municipalities to come up with more strict gun rules in the state, but not looser ones. Now, Lyons is the latest town to join that effort. However, the town's proposed ordinance is different than the other municipalities. Lyons is proposing a ban on open carry in public spaces. However, it would be allowed in private businesses. The guns would also be allowed in homes and cars, regardless of whether the owner has a concealed carry permit. Now, a second part of the ordinance would ban the sale of guns in commercial downtown districts. We spoke with the mayor of Lyons today who says that this is all about safety. We want to keep our town safe, first and foremost. And we worked in conjunction with the Boulder County Sheriff to develop these. Unlike Boulder, Superior and Louisville, the Lyons ordinance would not ban certain types of guns. Those municipalities are currently facing a lawsuit from Rocky Mountain gun owners over their ordinances, so they've been put on pause for the time being. We spoke with a DU legal expert who says the Lyons proposal might have a better chance of withstanding legal scrutiny or parts of it anyway. The Lyons carry restrictions, I will, I'm, certain will be up are, are not unconstitutional as the U.S. Supreme Court has currently interpreted the Second Amendment. Uh, Lyons may have a problem with its ban on gun stores in the commercial district. Now for its part, Rocky Mountain Gun Owner says that it is reviewing the Lyons proposal and it plans on attending the town's September 6th meeting on it. They have not yet decided whether they're going to pursue legal action against that town quite yet. Megan Lopez, Denver 7. Megan, thank you. President Joe Biden pushing his crime prevention plans during a visit to Pennsylvania, where Democrats and Republicans are looking for ways to gain leverage on the issue ahead of November's midterm elections. ABC's Alexis Christophorus reports. President Biden detailing his Safer America plan aimed at addressing gun crime in his first of three visits this week to the battleground state of Pennsylvania. It's based on a simple notion. When it comes to public safety in this nation, the answer is not defund the police, it's fund the police. Biden's $37 billion proposal, which needs congressional approval, seeks to increase the number of police officers in the country, crack down on violent crime, and invest in services that address the root cause of crime. But we're not stopping here. I'm determined to ban assault weapons in this country. Determined. It's not about taking away anybody's guns. In fact, we should be treating responsible gun owners as examples how every gun owner should behave. 
According to the Gun Violence Archive, there have been 450 mass shootings in the U.S. this year. Biden's Pennsylvania address coming just days after a deadly weekend shooting spree across the U.S. In Fort Worth, Texas, a five-year-old boy and a teenager were killed in a drive-by shooting. It's just horrific. I don't, you know, I'm speechless. More than a dozen people were shot, several fatally, in nearly a dozen incidents across New York City. In Detroit, a 19-year-old went on a shooting rampage, leaving three dead and one injured. And in Bend, Oregon, response for an active shooter, Safeway. A man used an assault-style weapon to open fire in a Safeway supermarket, killing two before killing himself. We need to guard against the cynicism of thinking of these attacks as regular, unavoidable things. I won't accept that. Gun violence, a top concern among Americans ahead of the November midterm elections. In June, President Biden signed the most sweeping gun reform bill in decades, which enhances background checks for gun buyers under 21, but still falls short of banning assault weapons. Alexis Christophorus, ABC News, New York. President Biden's visit to Pennsylvania comes just days before former President Donald Trump hosts his own rally there. And today, Biden offered his strongest condemnation yet of Republicans over their response to the January 6th riot at the U.S. Capitol. So let me say this to my MAGA Republican friends in Congress. Don't tell me you support law enforcement if you won't condemn what happened on the 6th. You can't be pro-law enforcement and pro-insurrection. You can't be a party of law and order and call the people who attacked the police on January 6th patriots. For God's sake, whose side are you on? Biden also called out some Republicans for attacking the FBI. After the search of former President Trump's Florida estate, we will have the latest on the Mar-a-Lago fallout and investigation into top secret documents coming up at 8.30. They're not missing buses. They're not having buses pass them. They're not. The answer to one community's transportation needs? dependable drivers. They're able to meet their appointments and get their health care needs and things met and their groceries and all that kind of stuff a lot safer. One microtransit program success now pushing the city to expand. We seniors here, we use the connector a lot. Low 90s today, even hotter weather is coming up for tomorrow. The Titanic as you've never seen before. Stunning new 8K footage revealing new details of the wreckage. Plus, a moon mission update as the Artemis 1 readies to reattempt launch.